Hi there, I'm Rex King. Welcome back to another episode of Straight to Streaming. Today I am talking about the Netflix movie A Day and a Half. So A Day and a Half follows this guy named Artan, who's going through this messy divorce and a custody battle. He goes to meet his wife at her work, only to be given the runaround. This causes him to freak out and draw his a gun on everyone in the clinic. He, this results in him basically taking his ex-wife hostage and things escalate from there when a cop named Lucas shows on to the, up onto the scene to try to negotiate with Artan and basically this results in the cop Artan and his wife being in a uh, car going to where his daughter is and the film is really freaking good. I, I really enjoyed this pretty simple story. We have three characters in a vehicle who have a bunch of tension between them as they're trying to get from one place to another place to another place after that. And this very simple setup helps the film grow out of a very tense situation. You really do not know what to expect from these characters and you do not know what's going to happen to them. What makes this film work really well in that regard is the characters are really well developed and feel like real people. Each of them have their own motivations. Each of them really uh, has their own problems that come to the forefront as they're in this car together. And there's nowhere for them to go so they have some really interesting conversations and you never really know when one of the characters is going to snap. Then you have the uh, wonderful performances here. Now, as with every foreign language film, I will not be going over the actors' names because I will mispronounce all of them and I will make myself look like an idiot and I feel like that's insulting to the actors to mispronounce their names so badly. That being said, our three core actors are an amazing group here. Uh, the guy who plays Artin is really like you good at making the character feel torn up inside making it so you're not sure if you want to root for this guy or make not sure what to really think of him and then you have the um, wife who her actress manages to basically convey the uh, absolute like terror that she's in while also conveying the uh, depths of uh, emotional stress that she feels towards her ex and our the, but the creme de la creme to me has got to be the guy playing the cop in this situation. Because he gets the most emotion across. He's the calming factor. And this guy manages to play him so well. There, this could have been very easily your standard cop character where we don't get insight into his character. Or any insight to his uh, who he is as a person. But due to the performance and the writing, I feel like we managed to really feel for this character. And ultimately, he is the character we're rooting for through most of the film due to the performance and, again, the writing. Uh, the visual style here is not as, like, peak as a lot of other films that I rave about. But what little we have works for this movie. Now, this movie mainly takes place in a car. Now... The claustrophobic nature that's conveyed through the visual style here really works to the film's advantage as you really just are just waiting for something to go horribly wrong with the car, with the people inside the car. Like, if our cop guy hits a bump, the gun in our town's hand will go off and probably will kill his ex-wife. So it's really... Um, a tense situation and you really are just waiting for something to go wrong and i think the visuals work wonderfully for the film in that regard now music wise this is a little tough usually i'm talking about when i isolate a score and i listen to it now this film doesn't have much of a score most of the movie there is no music as we focus on the character interactions and what's going on on screen. Now, there are a few instances where a score does kick in, but it's so subdued that it doesn't really impact what's on screen. So, in this case, 
I have to look at the use of music and see if it works for this particular movie, and I really think less is more here. So using n like not a lot of music and not a lot of an instrumental score here works the film advantage, as you're just so zoned in to what's going on on screen that you're not even paying attention to if there is a score. So, I, I really feel like it works to the film's advantage here. I feel like if there was a louder score or more of a score, it probably would have taken me out of the movie personally. So, at the end of the day, a day and a half is really freaking good. If I had to find one complaint, I would say that the ending is a little lackluster. Um, but, to be honest... I feel like that's a huge nitpick as the rest of the movie is just so good. You really do not know what's going to happen, how this is going to end, and you just are waiting on the edge of your seat for something terrible to happen for most of the runtime. I really enjoyed this movie, and I really gotta say, if you like intense situations that feel realistic and um, have characters that... Uh, really uh, feel like people, along with some wonderful performances, I would say that this movie is for you, especially if you don't mind foreign language films, because this movie is absolutely spectacular. So I'm going to give A Day and a Half a 9 out of 10. I cannot stress this enough, this is probably one of my favorite streaming movies I've seen all year, if not my favorite streaming movie of all year so far. Anyway, that's what I thought about Day and a Half. What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you liked this video, like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next time.